Good to go. How's it going, guys? Good to see all these faces on on our screen. Yeah. Instead of just instead of just staring at Brandon, like I normally <laughs> have to. That's nowhere near as good for sure. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, uh, excited about today's calls, guys. It's gonna be a good good celebration of our good buddy. You know, and uh, you know, there's gonna be a lot of a lot of tears shed, but um, it's gonna be a good one. Yeah. Brandon, before a lot we of turn it over to, to Casey, over just, to, uh, go ahead, Spivey. I'm just gonna say it's a it's a sad call too, but we're all gearing up too to to really honor Jimmy and and talk about the impact he made on all of us. But to conclude tonight with our Make a Wish event and just knowing how much Jimmy poured back into others and into charity and and, and giving back yep. and how how that became so important in the last three and a half four years of his life, I think it's Great way for everybody to remember we've got our make a wish event tonight. And you want to show up and show Jimmy some love. Let's let's take care of some kids tonight. For sure. I remember last year's make a wish event. Was it Jimmy that ended up buying like the most expensive set of golf clubs ever sold? Or who was it Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So awesome. So awesome. That's yes. Jimmy for you. For sure. No, that was for, that was furniture, Casey. That's furniture. That's what they make a wish. That's all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Yeah, um, well, we uh, we've got Delaney on guys today, and 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 the the group you see in front of you are all the um, leaders from Jimmy Spill Dinner's organization, and we wanted to have each one of them on to uh, get a few words about the impact that Jimmy made, and um, not only just directly on them, but. Um, the entire organization, their their entire personal professional lives, because we've all heard the story of Jimmy being this really terrible producer when he first started working with us, and then how he morphed himself into being one of the greatest producers the company had ever seen. But Jimmy didn't stop there. Jimmy Jimmy chose to build an organization, and because Jimmy made that choice, we get to see the faces that we get to see on the screen today and hear how they've gone on to impact 10X lives as well. And um, I just couldn't be more grateful. Delaney, you wanna say anything before we kick it off with Brandy? Um, yeah, I just am really thankful to you guys for having, uh, for having built this company when you did. If I, don't, if I hadn't come here over 10 and a half years ago, I don't get to find Jimmy, right? And um, and that, that is, uh, you guys really built a platform where we could have business that's based on real, real relationships that are, uh, that are there and powerful during great times and that are still there and resilient during hard times. And that's Jimmy had, uh, had been there for a lot of us during those hard times. And we got to be there for, uh, him and his family during those hard times. And that's what a real culture is about. We talk about that. We talk about the uh, the you know outstanding culture awards that we win. Those those culture awards are really found, and those those are those are earned. Uh, not just when we benefit from the culture, but when we sacrifice uh, to it, and when it's inconvenient, and other people need us. And that's when Jimmy always seemed to show up. He would show up in that, and we got to show up in that same way for him. A lot of us, and 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 just really have the benefit of of that difference that he made uh, and i know that's what each one of these leaders is gonna talk about is uh is you know building a business we'll see and jimmy make that transition uh where his belief inspired him into action inspired him to grow to the next level allowed him to shun the spotlight for long enough to get great in the area of building an agency since this, this is a builder's call and really impacting each one of our lives by calling up the best in each of us, uh, calling up the best in each one of his leaders, even calling up the best in me. Uh, there was a, uh, there was a, anytime we did anything together, it was like, yeah, that was great. This one thing though, that could have been better. Right. And it was always like, push, how can we push ourselves to the next level? How can we always move? Uh, how can we, how can we move it? You know, just move it down the field more. And uh, just really, really thankful to be a part of a culture and be, be a part of a company um, that, that does cross that, cross that line where we actually do get that uh, transformational and significant impact in each other's lives. 
And we know that our life was different from the time where we first met Jimmy to the time um, to now. And we get to live in that difference between um, where our lives were when Jimmy was here. And now that he's uh, now that he's he's gone um, and we we all miss him, but we get to live in that difference and the difference of our lives changed. Our business has changed. Uh, we're changed in so many ways. And we get to now um, multiply that out to other people. So I, I, I would love to just and Brandy Kimbrell has has been absolutely by his uh, by his side for the longest. And that's why I definitely wanted to spotlight uh, her first, because it hasn't been the symmetry journey that she's walked. It's been a life journey that she's walked with him and just been his right hand the whole time and uh, always, always making sure uh, that she was there and really pushing herself and growing herself as she was pushed by Jimmy. So, yeah. Uh, thanks so much, Brian. Um, my name is Brandy Kimbrell and I'm director Jimmy Spieldenner uh, in the Delaney Pritchett hierarchy here uh, at Symmetry and grateful doesn't even come close <laughs> to what I am um, for this company, uh, for Brandon, Brian and Casey. If it wasn't for them pushing harder when I got hard, um, then none of us would be here to to talk about the impact um, that Jimmy has made in so many lives and um, just so grateful for the leadership here um, and the cross line connections as well. Um, if I wasn't for Jimmy, there'd be a lot of people that I would never have had the chance to, to meet and call my friends. Um, and yeah, I, I've, it's been a long road for me and Jimmy. Um, it started in 2006. Um, I knew uh, a, a guy that was super ambitious. We were in our 20s and running around trying to open up a restaurant. He was uh, the bar manager. I was a server searching for a company that I wanted to move up in the ranks with. And Jimmy was one of those managers that I just wanted to, I wanted to be a part of whatever it is that they were doing. Um, and that was an underdeveloped Jimmy um, back in the day, right? We were all underdeveloped at some point. Um, so it was an interesting road for us to find how we could leverage each other's strengths and weaknesses to do great things together because we knew that we had a common goal. Uh, we wanted to be successful in whatever it was that we were doing. And it took us a little bit, but I, I'm really grateful for the, uh, the butting of heads that we had back in the day. Um, it helped us learn each other a little bit better and work together a little bit better. And by the time he left the restaurant, um, the connection that we had was, was just unreal um, from a personal and a professional standpoint. Um, I was one of the first warm market folks that he had contacted uh, to come aboard with Symmetry. He hadn't even really figured it out yet. Um, and I'm the only one left, I think, as far as warm market goes. Um, and I was the reluctant one. It took me about a year and a half or so uh, to really dig into Symmetry and what was going on. It was at a conference that made me make the decision to take the leap with him. Uh, and little did I know that when I did make that leap that, you know, it didn't register at first. Like we come here because the money's good. And there's all these great things that you can have by being a part of symmetry, like a flexible schedule and things like that. But Jimmy was driven by the contest and driven by, you know, being at the top. Uh, when we were in the restaurant business, he was taught to squeeze out of people because people were squeezing out of him, right? And that's corporate. It's not restaurant. It's corporate, period. We're always squeezing and focusing on that bottom line. And, and once Jimmy figured out what it is that what his mission was here, it was to add value and impact back into everyone that he came across and just leave them better off than he found them. Um, that comes to our agents, that comes to the cross-line relationships that we're able to develop. And then it comes with um, the families that we sit with, right? We get to leave them better off than we found them. And pretty soon for Jimmy, it turned into like a place where I could be on top and I could really get ahead to, wow, how impactful I can be to the people around me and truly creating um, just a life of significance. And that's really what he did. And I'm so grateful that he called me that day. I'm so grateful that I didn't get in my own way and I listened to him. Um, Jimmy used to say, you know, he used to tell me, if he told me something, I would just ask how high, right? If Jimmy says jump, I just say how high. And I'm really grateful that I continued that throughout my journey here at Symmetry. And uh, just so grateful that he made the call and that he dealt with me. Um, I probably wasn't the easiest person to train, um, as some of us cannot be um, at times, but I'm just so grateful that he leaned into the difficult 
uh, to be able to create this legacy that we get to, you know, carry on and then create our own legacies when this, within this agency. So just super grateful today. And thanks so much, Todd, um, for having me be a part of this special day. Yeah. Love you, Jimmy. Thank you, Brandy, for being such a special part of a special human being's life. And yeah, just, you know, I haven't got to know you guys as long as, as Delaney has and the other organization, but just hearing how much of an impact Brandy and how um, how impactful you were to keep Jimmy moving forward and being there for him before he even had to ask. Just uh, you made a lot of things possible, buddy, and we appreciate you. Mr. Tom McDonald. Hey, Todd. How's it going, yeah, buddy? Tom McDonald. It's going good, man. I tell you, I, uh, I prepared basically some, this is a builder's call. And um, so I wanted to make sure, first of all, I'm a proper retire for the Make-A-Wish nice. um, thing. And, um, you know, what I love about Jimmy, Todd, is some stuff that I learned from Brian Delaney um, also. But, you know, th there's a few words that always come to mind when you think of Jimmy Spielder. Words like soft, words like sympathetic words like coddling, um, words like sweet. Um, how, thank you, Ayers. <laughs> right. <laughs> I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to mess up your flow, but we didn't know the same Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, I, I must have been thinking about someone else. I'm totally sorry. No, um, guys, that was not Jimmy Spiel dinner, but I wish B dubs was on here because Brian Williamson says it well, that what Jimmy was, was a person who always brought the challenge. Right. You could always count on him to give strength. You could always count on him to be a pillar, to be a rock. And and he would always also do that with support in such a way that he you always knew that he was fighting for your highest possible good. Right. So if you're in leadership today, th these are the lessons that I would want you to you to take away from Jimmy's life is I, I'm, I'm a tough person. <laughs> I talk a lot and Jimmy knows that. And we we butted heads. But the fun, funny part about the way we butted heads, it wasn't that I was butting heads with Jimmy for the sake of telling him he's wrong. I was trying to figure out in my head how he was right. And he had to help me to get out of my box. If you haven't read this book, highly recommend it. Um, Jimmy spent a lot of time getting out of his own box so that he could see people where they were. And I think that's why he was such a great salesperson is because when he was in that home, he was still caring more about the other person than he was his own need. He had an uncanny way of being extremely driven for his own goals, but still putting the other person first. And, and the word of the year is invest. And I want to share just two quick stories on how Jimmy did that to me. And um and this is what became of it. There's a, it's an amazing, I, I like reading the Bible every day. In today's verse, I was reading Proverbs 17. It's today's November 17th. Proverbs 17, 17 is a Jimmy verse. And I, I hope you guys just always remember this when you think of Jimmy. It says, a friend loves at all times and her brother is born for adversity. And, you know, there, I remember I went to, um, I got into symmetry and, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm, I got my first two raises in my first four months, and we went to conference, and that's when we found out that my wife had to quit her full-time job, and we had to go all in on symmetry, and I fell flat on my face. <laughs> I did terrible that month. I had chargebacks while I was at conference, but I heard Melissa um, Wilson and Christy Woodbury from Sage crying because agency, owner meant, agency ownership meant something to them that was radically different. And Ian was there with us. And I, I remember that so well. And I remember thinking, man, a company that looks after the orphan and the widow, that's the kind of place I want to be. And, and agency ownership meant a lot to Jimmy. And he wanted that for us. And I always knew that he was fighting for that. And so when I fell on my face, he was bold enough to ask me a powerful question. He asked me not only how I was doing, he asked me how I was doing financially. And what he did is he, he realized that since I was plugging into all the calls and I, was, I had it, that potential, he saw, he was a noticer, right, Brian? He noticed that I had potential. And what he did is he invested in me. He put $1,000 worth of A-leads into me, but he did it with a stipulation. He said, I want you to text me your activity and you got to commit to doing 250 dials or booking 15 appointments, whichever came first. 
And even though Miranda taught me how to do the phones, it was almost a crutch for me. Sorry, Miranda, because I didn't want to do 250 dials, right? Connectors don't like to work, right, Brian? <laughs> And so I didn't do enough work and I, I was failing because I wasn't following the system. But Jimmy knew that I could if I could win here if I did. And, and I ended up doing 250 dials. I wrote 18,000 um, that September. I wrote 20,000 that October. And then fast forward, here I am. I qualified for a company trip for Edward Pritchett. And Jimmy was in his run for 110. And I remember him calling me up saying, hey, Tom, you're my hot hand right now. I need you because he needed people outside of Trey to help him get to the top contract to stay balanced. And um, he says, I got some A-leads. I'm going to buy, I'll buy them for you if you promise to work. I'm like, Abs. I was like, you mean to tell me you want me to make more money and you're going to cover the overhead? Fine, Jimmy, I'll make more money. <laughs> and you know what he did? This is Jimmy. This is relationships matter and people come first. He wanted to thank my wife. He said, make sure you thank your wife for me. Because he understood that I was, he didn't want to get something from me without giving. And he understood that there is a direct correlation between radical generosity and unshakable fulfillment. And he embodied that like no one I've ever seen. I've had some mentors, but in business, none compared to Jimmy Spilldinner. He was a legend. And, um, and his harvest, his harvest is going to be bountiful because he put people first. So well said, Tom. So well said, buddy. Um, yeah, the leadership, the intentionality and in recognizing the potential in others. Um, not for what they appear to be, but for what lies beneath. I've heard that talked about Jimmy so much that uh, he just had that vision, and that heart, you know, and damn it, he's right most of the time. Um, he really could see that. So, um, Aransa, I know we've all um, gotten to see some of some of your amazing story and how you've, you know, you've transformed your life um, quite Quite unlike we've probably seen any agent in symmetry history with, you know, coming from a new country, learning a brand new language and having the success you have. And I know Jimmy was a huge part of that and uh, just would love to hear from you, buddy. Yeah, well, thank you very much uh, for having me on. Um, my name is Aran Salaharagan and I'm director Jimmy Spillner. And... Um, usually don't cry, <laughs> just so you guys know, I don't cry. But uh, I was thinking earlier, right, like um, what to share. And, and that is true, right? Like my story, like, sorry, I have my dogs in the, in the room upstairs. I have two huge animals. Um, so uh, Jimmy is completely like everything in my story, no symmetry by my, my story in life, right? Because I moved from another country to America. And I always say that if it wouldn't be for symmetry, I wouldn't be here in America right now because my mom, she is sick with cancer and that's big, right? We never know like if you're gonna, that person is gonna be here tomorrow. So uh, we need to make sure that, that we are making the right decision because one thing that we cannot take back is gonna be time, right? And I don't know if I ever shared this, but I'm gonna be vulnerable and I'm gonna say it. When I met Jimmy, which was uh, through uh, common friends, he didn't know that, but I was living in a one bedroom apartment with my uncle on a mattress on the floor with my two dogs. That's how Jimmy met me. And working, you know, like in a place that I hated, <laughs> that every morning I was like, why do I have to go there? Like keeping up with people that I even wanted to say good morning. And, um, and Jimmy gave me the opportunity, you know, like I do truly believe that I probably was part of his mission in this earth, because if it wouldn't be for Jimmy, like he, he always like pushed me like to do better, to do more. And my life has changed in like such an amazing way, you know, like, can you just imagine, I'm not just talking about the money because sometimes like people talk about like, oh, money, money, money. 
can you understand like in what situation you are emotionally when you are living on a freaking floor? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's bad. It's bad, right? And uh, this morning, I was just going on the CDC regulations to see to what country I can travel. And I found that Turkey is open and I was able to buy my flight from one day to another. Actually, from a couple hours to another, you know? And what Jimmy, what Jimmy left me, it's a lot of um, freedom, confidence, trust in myself, love. I mean, the person that I was, you know, when you are not in a good spot, like emotionally, financially, you are probably not going to be your best version. So um, that, that's all, those are all the things that Jimmy left me. You know, like I, I told him um, a couple of weeks before he passed that um, if I, I can actually understand and relate when somebody talked to me, because I mean, you guys probably can agree with that, you know, like for good or bad, Jimmy always was open and honest. I, he didn't care if you liked it, if you didn't like it. And that's something that I completely loved and appreciated about him because I'm kind of like the same way, you know? So our relationship, you know, like Jimmy and I, we used to talk like every single day, you guys know. I mean, I, I was putting a lot of activity and I needed a lot of coaching and a lot of feedback. So we were communicating like almost every day, right? And, and then of course, like from there, like we, we developed like an amazing friendship. Um, like I know that he cared about me like so much. And I, I mean, I, I, I care about him like so much and I just, I, I love him, you know? And um, he, he did in three years of my life what others, including family has never been able to do in a lifetime for me, you know? So, um, but I told him, I was like, he, Jimmy was a high producer. He was an elite producer. He was bad. He got better, yeah. elite producer. And we all know what elite producers or top producers deal with when it comes into the building side. We are in the builder's call, right? And what is that? Giving up on the today to build a better future for later, right? And you guys know my story. I mean, I, I, I thank God to Jimmy. I was able to always say like, hey man, like I got these numbers. Aranza, that's great, but I did more. <laughs> you know, hey, that's great, but I did better. Hey, you achieved that. Oh, I, I did it better than you, you know? And I always was able to push more and more and more because of him, because he was such a, he raised the bar like so high for me always and for all of us, right? Like the whole company. And, and I told him, you know, like I've been struggling with the building and, 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 I, and, and yeah, you know, I was able to relate like so well with him because he told me like, Ransa, like I'm, I'm, I'm dying, I'm dying. And I wouldn't be able to for these past three years if I would be a producer. I don't know if what is gonna happen to you. Hopefully like nothing happens to you and you don't have to experience that. But do you see the value? Like, do you see why I'm saying this? And you know, our numbers, well, of course, Jimmy, he, if he is here, he will say, no, I was, my numbers were better. So probably his numbers were better, <laughs> but my numbers were pretty good, you know, on the sales side. And, um, and, and, and yeah, I mean, of course I do understand the value. I do see the value and the impact because again, like if I'm here today, not just in symmetry, but in America, my life has changed for the better financially, emotionally, my relationships Absolutely everything has changed in my life because of him, because of the impact, the advice, the love, the energy, the time, the effort, everything that he has put in into me. And something very important, when you build that type of relationship, conflict or not agree in everything 24-7, it's going to happen. And that's what our, I do believe that why our relationship was even stronger, right? Because many times we didn't agree on things. And... And I think that that's actually like made that way our relationship is stronger. But like, like Brandy said earlier, you know, like being grateful is just an understanding. Like it's, I mean, in my case, again, like in my case, uh, I, I do believe that I was part of Jimmy's mission in life and I'm going to be thankful for him regardless of what happened forever. And everybody in my family is going to know like what Jimmy was able to do for me. So Thankful. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Todd and uh, yeah. Casey and Brian for having me on here. So blessed to have you. And Ron, so I think what you said so important to know, too, that because of 
you know, what Brandon and Pope and Casey built, like what you continue to do will directly still be a part of Jimmy and his legacy. And every time that you win, Jimmy wins. And every time you have a win, his sweet wife and his sweet, beautiful daughter will have a win. And um, I know that that motivates a lot of you um, to continue on. So thank you for that, Aronsa. Mr. Ripple. Hello, Todd. Thanks for having me. How are we doing? Uh, it's, um, I'm uh, very you know, grateful to be on this call. Obviously, you know, uh, the circumstances, but, you know, I, I'm Chris Ripple. I've been here uh, at Symmetry a little over three years. Um, I'm a direct to Jimmy Spiel dinner. Uh, I was in the business uh, prior to being in with Symmetry. I, I was in the business uh, and I struggled. And I was on my way out. Um, one sec, gather myself here. I was on my way out of the business and uh, I was looking for just regular jobs. I was a financial advisor and um, a friend of mine, Caleb, he was direct to Jimmy. Uh, you know, still a good friend of mine. And, and he was direct to Jimmy and he only had good things to say about Jimmy. And he said he was a cool dude and everything. and. And then he ended up putting me in touch with Jimmy back in July of, of 2018. And, you know, at this point, Jimmy would have had already been, you know, going through, you know, some of the stuff that he was going through. But, but even at that time, you know, for, for him to take the time to talk to me, um, not really someone that was probably going to have success. Um, so he, he believed in me before I did. Um, so... I've been here three years and I'm very grateful for, for him believing in me before I did. And, you know, because my life is very different, obviously now three years later. So, um, that's all I really wanted to say was, uh, thank goodness. Thank God for Jimmy, um, for coming into my life. Well said, Chris. Well said, buddy. And, common thing we keep hearing right Jimmy Jimmy believed in believed in us before we ever believed in ourselves in so many cases and um, you know and again appreciation to you Delaney I know a lot of that came from a lot of long hours hard conversations and pushing each other to grow and um, Mr. Josh Busick man incredible leader incredible person incredible um, business partner to symmetry and, and so meaningful to so many people, buddy, but talk to us about your buddy, Jimmy. Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm Josh Busick, uh, regional agency director here. Um, first and foremost, direct to try Alderson and Cloutier, uh, so part of the Cloutier, uh, Spiel Denner, Delaney Pritchett, uh, hierarchies and super grateful for, um, the leadership that each and every one of those guys has poured into me. Uh, over the years to get me to this stage, um, which is still, I feel like, just the beginning. But um, yeah, when it comes to Jimmy and trying to put together some thoughts about like different impacts he's had on me when it comes to building a team or why I build, there's, there's so many, uh, so hard to narrow down. I remember uh, early on, uh, shortly after I had started, right around the time I started actually, uh, as far as why, you know, how he taught me why it's important to build was when he had his house fire. Uh, and I was able to see him, you know, go through the house fire and not even, not even like bat a, a, an eye about it almost. I mean, he was sad about his possessions gone, but able to, to just be out of the field. His income didn't stop, still kept pouring into us on his team, even while he was living in hotels and doing everything else. And me being able to see early on, like, wow, a couple of years of hard work uh, when something like that comes up, um, you know, to be able to be in that situation. Uh, but I think one of the things that I was, as I was thinking about what to talk about when it comes to Jimmy was not as much, um, why to build, but the, the lessons he taught me and how to build properly. Um, you know, he taught, uh, how to build the right way, the right cultures, um, how to build with the proper support challenge, uh, that, that only Jimmy can do. Um, you know, uh, I remember early on. Um, oh, when I came to my first conference, I wasn't even licensed yet, but I remember him, 
him spending time talking with me uh, and not just talking with me to like try to get me excited about symmetry, but talking to me, trying to get to know me. Uh, right. And at that time, uh, when I started, uh, he didn't have any AOs on his team yet, you know, and now like, I, I think there's like, like 11 of us or something like that. Um, and like the reason was because he was so good at, at building relationships. He was so good at building relationships where he could offer high challenge. Uh, he, I mean, anybody that knows Jimmy knows that um, Jimmy could get, could bring challenge that other people might not be able to get away with. Uh, I remember um, I was maybe six to eight weeks into uh, making phone calls here, got my license, started making some phone calls. And I remember one Friday night he called me and he said, uh, hey man, how, how the dials go? And I was like, oh man, I was like, it was, I got beat up tonight. It was rough. And he's like, oh, he's like, does Josh, you need me to call him a way ambulance? He's like, Josh, you going to be all right? I'm like, shut up. Uh, you know? But he, he could bring that type of, of challenge to you all the time. And the reason was, was because, you know, how much other areas that he poured into you with uh, and everything. And I remember, um, you know, early on when it come to building, you know, he told me, you know, about, uh, you know, you don't hire, you don't recruit people to build your empire. Uh, you, you recruit people so that you can help them build theirs. Uh, and seeing him, seeing him do that, even just a couple of months ago at the Spiel Dinner Retreat, uh, right? He's, you know, sick and dying of cancer and kept catching him in the kitchen, help, trying to help cook the food. Uh, you know, he was, he was constantly back there trying to make sure that everything was going along right. And like, Jimmy, stay out of the kitchen, buddy. You know, everybody else can handle this. Uh, but that's, that's the type of person that he was. But, um, and I remember, uh, like, as far as building the relationships go, I remember in July of 2016, um, when I was, I thought I was going to go back to the car business. I accepted an offer from the car business, was going to go back. Uh, between talking to Trey and Jimmy and Brian, you know, I, I decided, like, I'm not giving up on my dreams. I'm going to stick this thing out, uh, and I'm going to finally make the changes that I need to make in myself. But uh, I remember Jimmy um, decided, like, you know, uh, one of the things I was really struggling with was uh, proper posture, having the proper posture uh, to do things right. And I remember him deciding, you know, I'm going to come up through Pennsylvania. He was going to go to the Steelers Patriots game. So he said, you know, book up a Thursday afternoon of appointments um, and uh, I'm going to come run some appointments with you. So, uh, and we went in the first appointment I ran, like having Jimmy there with me, that's a lot of pressure uh, in and of itself. And I wasn't good at it anyway, but I remember messing, just fumbling all through everything, uh, messing everything up. And uh, it was a critical period situation. Where we were going to have to talk about mortgage payments with uh, this uh, older couple. And I got down to the end and, and the, the husband, Dave, uh, Dave said, he said, yeah, he said, um, no offense. He's like, but I really just wanted full mortgage payoff. Uh, he said, um, you know, he's like, if it's, if we're only gonna be able to cover the mortgage payments for a bit, he's like, I'm really not that interested in that. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, and I started kind of be like, yeah, I understand. Give my card. And Jimmy's like, hold on a sec. And, and like, those of you that know Jimmy know that again, Jimmy was a toucher, right? So Jimmy like reaches across the table and like puts his hand on this guy's hand. He's like, Dave, he's like, I hear what you're saying, buddy. He's like, but a couple minutes ago, you said Rosalind would be really struggling to take care of the mortgage. If something happened to you. He's like, so you, can you look at Roslyn right now and tell her that for 60 bucks a month, you're not willing to take care of a year's worth of mortgage payments? He's like, for real? And Dave was like, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> we ended up like doing two policies and then like a little bit later did two more. And they actually, they, then they, they loved Jimmy. Jimmy taught me that being able to uh, have that posture wasn't scaring people away, that people actually appreciated that about you. Because th those people to this day, they still, they just did an annuity with me. Uh, a couple months ago and they always asked every time I talked to him how's Jimmy how's Jimmy um, and like he taught me because uh, he knew what I was struggling with was the posture uh, and he was able to you know kind of come and actually spend some time running appointments with me uh, to, to show me that and uh, but the, the last thing I want to talk about was that uh, you know uh, Jimmy really taught was um, early on one of the first books I had read here at Symmetry was take this or not take the stairs yeah take the stairs by Rory Vaden where he talked about the Buffalo uh, and, you know, the difference in Buffaloes and cows. Now Buffaloes charge storms head on, you know, and, and cattle try to outrun the storms and prolong their time in it. And, uh, you know, un, you know, him and Jason Hayes, both honestly getting to um, know both of those guys over the last few years uh, and watching them go through their, their adversity and their storms uh, and how both of those guys, um, they charge it head on without even flinching. 
like and that that's just who Jimmy was and even through the the years of Jimmy um, and thank God he had built the team and that Brian and Edward had and everybody else had got him uh, poured into him to help him build a team so that he could have the last few years of his life as free as he was but uh, every single one of us that's on this call right now that's had conversations with Jimmy over the last three or four years, every single time, it was never about him. He didn't want the conversation talking about him and how he was doing. Uh, you know, he didn't He didn't want, to, if you tried to start, you know, a little bit too much with the sympathy, he'd be like, no, nah, I mean, not about me. That's what, what's going on with you, uh, right? And just charge that storm head on and not even flinching uh, and being the, the, the true Buffalo spirit um, that him and Jason both were. Um, so that, I just wanted to share those couple of things that he really, over the years, um, has poured into me and, and many other stories, but uh, I appreciate you having me on Todd and uh, letting us share. Uh, thanks for sharing, Josh. Thanks for everything you do. And yeah, that most of you know that Buffalo spirit award and something near and dear to this, this company and organization. And, and, and I just love the story behind it. If you don't know the story, um, look into that. And Mr. Ian, I know uh, I got to hang out and have some, sushi with you not long ago buddy it was a pleasure to get to hang out with you and I can only imagine trying to sit in a room and watch you and Tim Penso and Jimmy have a have a put down contest because uh I've never seen friends treat each other so horrible until you've had sushi with Tim Penso and Ian Graham so Ian what's up buddy yeah. Hey, Todd. Um, first off, Ian Graham, direct to Sterling Gatling, part of the skiing, Alderson Cloutier, Spiel Dunner, Delaney Pritchett hierarchy. Very blessed to be so. Um, and a huge debt of gratitude to Brandon, Casey and Brian for for uh, allowing us to thrive here in in the symmetry world um, that we get to. And it's funny you bring that up, Todd. Um, my favorite memory of of Jimmy, uh, probably the most exciting memory of Jimmy was not building business. It was uh, on a boat. In, in the Gulf off of Tampa. Um, and Tim and I are in the front of the boat and uh, it's him and his brother, Johnny, and, and some of his family members uh, in the back. And there's two massive freighters that are going perpendicular to us, creating these enormous waves in the Gulf. And he's like, oh, that'll be fun to, t to take it over that. And he goes full throttle over the wave. And we realize about halfway in, he's like, I think I'm going too fast. He like turns off the engine, but we're already up in the air. Tim and I are both about 10 feet off the seat. No joke. Uh, actually, Tim was grabbing on and he looked up and I was off the seat um, and landed hard and we all made it. But uh, a flash of death, you know, uh, happened during that moment. But that was the that was the man Jimmy was. Um, one of my favorite quotes, Todd, of, of Jimmy was at this last altitude, the Pritchett Altitude Conference. In August, he said, live like you'll die tomorrow and dream like you'll live forever. Live like you'll die tomorrow and dream like you'll live forever. And if I could, if I could say two words that I think embody who Jimmy was, it's giver and fighter. The giver and fighter. Um, Jimmy, Jimmy was always pouring out and giving, not only to agents, but also just to people in need, charities. Um, if you guys don't know, in, in lieu of flowers, he wanted donations sent to uh, a, a children's home in Africa that he got to visit um, when he was over there um, not not too long ago and they're they're the the conditions they're living in are just absolutely horrible and so he's raising money um, we're at about 33,000 raised of, of 100,000 I'm sure that's floating around on Facebook if it's not I'm sure someone can post it to the various Facebook groups and get that out um, and the other way is magic of a wish tonight um, you know, that, these events are one of Jimmy's favorites because we're able to give back to people who are in need. And that's who Jimmy was. He was a giver. And as, as a fighter, I know he told Brian um, just last week before he passed that he never once believed he was going to lose. Three and a half years of the doctors telling him otherwise, and he never once believed he was going to lose. And that type of fight in him is the type of fight that we need uh, Todd, you know, we, we, we build business here and, and I see agents who, who are great producers and they want to start building a business and, and they stop building a business because someone quit, <laughs> you know, or, or because of this or that some, some horrible, I'll say it like it is horrible excuse when, you know, you have a man who's, who's fighting and refusing to lose and the impact, the ripple effect that he has had on, on, on hundreds of thousands of lives because of what he's done. He, you, it's impossible 
for you and I to know the impact that we'll have. It's impossible for him to know the impact that he has had and that he'll continue to have because of the legacy that we create here. Because he, he continued the fight and when it was tough as a producer and then it was tough as a builder, because he did that, he eventually hired Trey Allerson Cloutier, who eventually hired Joel Skeen, who eventually hired Sterling Gatling, who eventually hired Ian Graham. Ian Graham was a former elementary, uh, elementary school teacher making about 37 k a year who was broke as a joke and going backwards each month. And Ian and his wife, Jenny, um, we were struggling. I'm just going to share personally. We we're, were, were struggling to, to have kids. We went through about four years of trying to have children and we couldn't. And IVF was too expensive, Todd, because to run through between medications and like the paying the treatment facility, it's like 16 grand each round. And I'm just throwing out there. Um, my son, Owen, who is the biggest blessing that's ever happened in my life, he's 20 months old now, wouldn't be here if it weren't for Jimmy Spieldenner. Because of that ripple effect, not directly because of Jimmy, but because of the ripple effect. So I want to share that. And we have another on the way in, due in January who we had to do another 16 grand for. I wasn't able to afford that. We were, we were not doing that. They would not be there. The biggest blessing in my life would have never occurred if it hadn't been for Jimmy sticking it wow. out when times got tough. And so I, a, a word of encouragement to people, it, the, the two, two, ways, two ways that we can continue to live Jimmy's legacy, two ways. Number one is to give to people in need. Whatever charity you want to support, whatever you, you believe in, you reap what you sow. And when you sow in, you reap back tenfold. And that starts with tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time with Magic of a Wish. And the second way is to fight. Fight through the struggle. Fight through the hardship. When times get tough, dig in. Understand it's not the end of the world. There's a way around it, over it, through it, no matter what. And understand you're not doing it for you. You're doing it for the people who you don't even know you're going to impact yet. Because Jimmy didn't know when times got tough as a producer and as a builder that six years, seven years, eight years later, Owen Graham was going to be born and be the biggest blessing to Ian. He didn't know that at that time, but that happened because of that digging in. And so the, the, the ripple effect we're able to have here, guys and gals, and that we're able to spread to other people is going to reach hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. When we all go out and we dig in, we can continue to lock arms and, and win together. So I'm just so grateful for Jimmy. Um, I love him like a brother. I, I'll, I'll miss him severely. And, and, and let's, let's live his legacy, though, by being a giver and being a fighter, just like he was. Love it, buddy. Love it, man. I, didn't, I did not know that full story. And um, it is very cool to remember, guys, it's not just the impact and the legacy that we make on people that we can actually see. Um, what we do here on this earth can actually impact somebody generations down that maybe you don't even realize today. So that's awesome, Ian. And I hope, uh, I hope your kids have a, just as smart of a mouth as you do and a good, in a, in a good shit talking conversation. Um, <laughs> uh, we're, uh, we're going to be rolling right into the national call, guys, here in just a second. I know we're running a little bit behind, but we're going to do some leaderboards. We're going to do some promotions. Got some awesome promotions to announce. Um, got some other leaders on that want to speak about Jimmy. So, But before we wrap up this builder's call, um, Delaney, I'll let you kind of introduce um, Miss Terry and the impact and everything that she's done. I know we at the home office get to communicate with her quite a bit, um, whether she was running from hospital to hospital, trying to find which room Jimmy was in to get him on a call or <laughs> get him to answer a question or do whatever it was we were trying to pull off last minute because Jimmy just wouldn't say no. Anytime we asked Jimmy to help, he wouldn't say no, but he knew at any given moment he might be in a hospital, he might be in a room, and he might not be able to talk to us. But, but Brian, I know you work closely with Terry and talk to her a lot too, so. Yeah, yeah, and that that's it. I mean, if – you know, this, this is not an opportunity to build a team. This is an opportunity to build a company inside of another company, right? And part of that is your field sales and leadership team. And part of that is your executive team. And Terry Mothershead was the backbone of the Spiel Dinner organization, still is. And that, that backbone means that you take from the brain and you communicate to the rest of the body and that it operates that way. And she surely was that. She was she was an information center to pass down and filter and express and to uh, make Jimmy's voice uh, get to where it needed to get to and to provide the basic support day in, day out 
that he needed for his life and for his investments and everything to keep running. And he always said it that she would get his worst so other people could get his best. And that was that was who she was. She was his she was his backbone in so many ways and was the foundation um, and is the foundation of the Spill Dinner organization, along with his sister, um, Mary Boudreau, who's who's now come in alongside. But just want to give Terry an opportunity to to share because she knew him so well in a way that a lot of us, a lot of us didn't, you know, in, in such a, such a very close way. So go ahead, Terry. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Um, Terry Mother said here, um, now officially direct to the one and only Jimmy Skilled Dinner um, in the Brian Delaney Edward Pritchett hierarchy. And man, the gratitude runs so deep for, for Jimmy, especially and Brian and Edward and also to Brian, Brandon, and Casey, and to you, Todd, also for giving me the opportunity to speak on the call today about um, the legacy of someone that is so dear to me. Um, so thank you for that. Um, so for those of you that don't know, I started as Jimmy's recruiter seven years ago, and um, for the last five years, like Brian said, I've been his personal assistant, the manager for his business, um, sounding board at 2 a.m., um, for a speech in the morning, um, even the rise out of his brain at times. And um, the last seven years of working with Jimmy has been an honor um, and nothing short of an absolute blessing. Um, if you know Jimmy well, as Brian mentioned, uh, there's a life before you met him and then a life after. Um, he was an extraordinary human that made um, a transformational impact in every single life that he touched. Um, and I feel really lucky to have been in the trenches with Jimmy in this business. You know, we got to celebrate some of the biggest wins together, um, overcome some of life's biggest challenges together. Um, and I feel really blessed to have gotten to witness this journey um, from a different perspective than most people. Um, I can say the most impactful gift that Jimmy ever gave to me was his mindset. Um, when you work with someone in this capacity day in and day out um, to do your job effectively, you know, you, you kind of just want to understand how they think and how they operate and you want to offset their weaknesses with their strengths. But um, for Jimmy, you just didn't want to be effective, right? He gave his best away. He, he, he left it all on the field, right? So to me, he deserved the best in return. Um, he challenged everyone to be the the best version of themselves. Um, so, so what I'm most grateful for along this journey is learning to think like Jimmy, you know, in every situation, big and small. Um, and I kind of feel like it's my superpower at this point, you know, that I'll have for the rest of my life and something um, I get the privilege and really the duty to share with the world. Um, a seed that he planted in me very early on was that problems don't exist without solutions, right? You don't go to Jimmy with a problem. <laughs> you go with a solution only. That's the only way. So uh, when faced with a hardship, you know, instead of asking, why is this happening to me? Figure out what it's actually trying to teach you. You know, life happens for you, not to you. Um, change your thinking instead of, I have to get out of bed today. No, you get to get out of bed today. You know, you can't be miserable and grateful at the same time. Um, so be really intentional with your thoughts. and. Um, for all my friends out there in the admin world, um, something Jimmy told me really early on, don't, don't just do what you're told, do what you have to take ownership of this, you know, be a partner, not just an employee. Um, Jimmy taught me that and that in of itself changed my entire life. Um, so Todd, when, when it comes to building, um, you know, Jimmy always wanted to win. As we all know, he always pushed through the pain always from the very beginning. Um, he persevered when it was difficult, found solutions when only there were problems in his path. Um, and, but let's just pretend for a minute that he didn't, right? Like, let's just imagine he would have thrown in the towel when building was maybe just a little too hard or no one was responding to his ads or an agent quit or there were some chargebacks rolling in, you know? And I, I know that we say that money doesn't create happiness, you know, money doesn't buy happiness, but um, since being di diagnosed with cancer, Jimmy actually received almost $2 million in deposits, okay? 
$2 million in deposits since he was diagnosed with cancer, okay, that afforded him the very best treatment, um, helped him surpass, you know, multiple expiration dates that the doctors continue to give, um, and just live an, an adventure-filled life in three years that most people won't experience that in a lifetime. So uh, if you can tell me how that would have been possible with his income tied to his feet, you know, I'm all ears, but um, I, don't tell me building isn't worth it because I might just call you crazy. So um, that's all I've got. I, I'm so grateful. Thank you all so much for allowing the opportunity to speak today. Um, and I'll go ahead and pass it back to you. Harry, that was, that was beautiful. And um, if that's all you got is a, mic drop like that guys you know you want to talk about living a life and putting yourself in a position to truly spend the time with the people and the things you want to you got to build you got to be able to duplicate yourself it's not only what's best financially it's what's best to make the biggest impact in the world and so many companies out there think that this world should be centered around some silly high contract so that you can make a lot as a personal producer, you know? And because Jimmy made the decision and understood the value in being in a system that allows you to build a business and the impact that he can make on others and the good it brought to his heart, he was able to continue the lifestyle to afford himself the best treatment, to go to Africa with his best friend on the planet and Brian Delaney and experience the world with his beautiful wife and his daughter well, he didn't have to write a single piece of business. We all need to keep in mind just how important that is. So I appreciate you all being on, guys. Sorry we went so long on the builder's call, but I think you know that hearing directly from the people that Jimmy led and Jimmy did life with was very impactful. Hopefully it was for you and Brandon and Casey and Pope. I'll, I'll turn it back over to you guys, but uh, we appreciate, we love every one of you. Um, Jimmy's still with us. And, and most importantly, you guys know that we here at the home office are here for you, for whatever your needs are. We'll get through this all together, and um, we're just a phone call away. <laughs>